Do you ladies love the tulip poplar? Yeah, I used the app when I had my phone. Yeah, <laughs> tulip tree or tulip poplar. Oh, I didn't even see the third one over there. <laughs> so I pushed three of them down. The trees? Mm-hmm, not the sheep, Or the yeah. branches, yeah, yeah, not the sheep. I, I didn't push the sheep down, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I figured I'd give them something to eat while they're over here. I mean, not that they don't have plenty to eat, but like... It's something that they really enjoy. Right, yeah, they, they, like their, they like their treats. Yep. And they actually are going, they're eating a lot of these, uh, what are the... Milkweed? They, they like to eat that, so that, that's, that's going out well. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> like, where are you going? I don't know. Okay, so I wanted to start over here. So first of all, we need to say we're recording this... Same day. Different day. Sorry. The evening before. <laughs> so we're wearing the same clothes. It's still Monday for us. <laughs> you have an early all day, mm -hmm. and I'm taking Winston to the... Um, the vet. The vet tomorrow morning, and so we won't have time to film, kick, and get it published and all that kind of stuff. So we're doing it tonight. I'm gonna to show you what we accomplished today, and... <laughs> we got some scraps. Yeah. Oh, Sophia. <laughs> Um, so for the for the two mamas and their ten chicks, there's ten, not oh, nine. Uh huh. We oh, okay. I put up, I used some of these uh, corner post stepping posts from the chicken fence as just corner posts for this, and then just chicken wire with some zip ties, and made a little outside run area for them, so that way they have more space. Everybody's inside right now. Nope, there's oh, a couple there's, out. There's a little chicky chick, 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 chick right there. Oh, Donna's like, get back here. And this is only for during the day. Yes, we will close them up. And this is heavily trafficked. We didn't make it very big because we didn't want aerial predators, but we're not worried. Um, it'll be all closed up in the evening time. Yeah, and I, I did it right around these nesting boxes. So they had shade. They also had mm -hmm. protection from aerial predators, not that they can't go inside. Right. So, and in, plus I didn't want to use too much of our chicken, chicken wire, wire. Eh, you know. And we didn't use hardware cloth. Um, so it's not a hundred percent, but I mean, to be honest, if a snake was going to get in, they still could have got in through the nesting boxes. Yeah. This just is allowing them a little bit more safety or a little bit more exercise room. Yeah. And we're out here so frequently, but so cute to watch them. It really is. They're very, they're super cute. <laughs> and the other chickens are always all around and <laughs> checking them out, uh, which is good because they'll be integrated back into the flock um, here. Probably not too much longer. We just have to have a safe place for the babies uh, to go and to stay before we integrate them fully back into the flock. Yeah. So after this, I'll make my rounds for evening chores and move those guys over mm -hmm. so they got fresh grass today with those girls, I guess. Girls, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so all sorts of fun chicken updates. Has anybody ever commented on the solar panels being out here? No. Oh. Yeah, I have. I just keep the solar panels out here and then connected to the blue eddy for charging and I can use it for power whenever I need it and that is waterproof mm -hmm. so yeah. works out pretty well that that power unit has come in so handy for us use it a lot. We, we use it way more than I think we initially thought we mm -hmm. would yeah we use it a lot I use it to charge the batteries for the lawnmower so we're basically running the lawnmower for, for free, free yeah. yeah which is really nice and it's really easy the lawnmower charges so easy I know that's been a Kind of a question is, you know, when we got the electric lawnmower, a lot of folks were like, oh, that's not going to last. Are you sure you're going to, you know, do you actually use it? Does it work? Do you like it? And I would say what it's been over a year. Yeah, we got it in, I think it's a year. March? I think we got it end of May, early June oh, okay. of last year. Yeah. It has a four year warranty. Mm -hmm. um, we use it at least every day. Yeah, I at mean, least. Multiple times in a day we use it yeah so and it works for a number of things <laughs> but yeah we love it it, mm -hmm. it we haven't found anything that it hasn't been able to tackle for us which is great yeah so we use it to haul things we use it to haul ourselves or like yes this morning <laughs> when i was doing the chores for the chickens up here uh -huh. i put the what is everybody doing 
They're going to check out a car. Kinsley's going to start chasing cars now? I guess. Okay. <laughs> she wants to be part of the pack. Yeah, she does. <laughs> um, so I put the feed bucket on the, where I put, my, put your feet, you know, the, uh -huh. the oh, feet the deck. deck. Uh -huh. And then I just drove around and just oh, shoved nice. food into the, each of the, <laughs> otherwise I'm walking around with a heavy feedback bucket yeah. of food. Smart. How much food do you give them? Just out of curiosity. Do you know? Um, like, do you have a count? It depends. Uh -huh. I usually do about three scoops for these guys. Okay. About two for the girls. Okay. Uh, one or two for the uh, barnyard mix. Uh -huh. And then about three or so for the boys. I try to feed the boys, the two sets of boys, a lot more. Yeah. Because I, I want to make sure they're not hungry and picking on each other. So either I'm severely over feeding. Oh, that's, that'd be first. <laughs> or you're underfeeding. So <laughs> I think what we need to do is figure out. Well, the scoops are. Yeah, the scoops are big. Yeah. Well, okay. So for that little two cup scoop that has a broken handle. Mm -hmm. I would do six of them for this. Right. So I do basically one per bird of the meat birds and that's oh. good for all day. So basically it's one per bird. One scoop per bird? Yeah, per okay. day. Is kind oh, of... uh, yeah, I come out and feed them at night again. Oh, okay. I feed them twice a day. Okay. That's probably the difference. Okay. Hey, yeah. look, our communication is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't quite ask the question all the way. I just said, how much you feed them? Per day? Like, I, I didn't ask. I want to go in here and I want to show them, show them the colors of some of these birds now that they're maturing, because mm -hmm. they are gorgeous birds. It's on. I can hear it. Yeah, I know you can hear it, but you know, you like that communication. You like to warn me of impending dangers. Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy. Electric fences. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's our welcoming committee. All right, so I think it goes from <laughs> not as interesting to interesting the Aww. farther we go over. I mean, okay. The, Variety. The, yeah, the Rhode Island Reds. I mean, they're they're, they're handsome birds. Handsome birds, but they're just red and black. They're very shiny. Oops. They look great. So. And then. They do have some green in their feathering. Okay. In the sun. Uh huh. So I'm trying to help them out. Yeah. All right. I hear you. <laughs> and then these girls here. I mean, they're, you know, they're orange and black. And they're all a little different. So some of them have collars. Some of them don't. Uh, they're very sweet. Some of them are lighter, but these are the six meat girls that got um, picked on. So we kept them separated and we just decided that we didn't need to process all of the meat birds. And we, since they are good egg layers and our friend Sean, he actually kept some one back from his processing last time mm. and he's had it for over a year now. Um, so we know, unlike the Cornish cross, they're not just gonna drop dead of a heart attack. Yeah. These birds can actually become part of our breeding to breed future meat birds. So we'll put a Rhode Island Red, which Ooh. is a good dual purpose bird, in with these girls. Right. And we will hatch them out for dual purpose babies to, for sale. So if folks want meat birds or if they want uh, egg layers, but they're hardy and good foragers. As you can see, they're very good foragers. And they're very sweet. One's, they're, one's really sweet. It likes to come up and... They have good personalities. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Try and get it in there. There we go. And uh, then... And these guys... <laughs> Hi, you're Sir Crozelot's son. Yeah, that one and this one. Definitely Sir Crozelot's son. <laughs> and the other three are uh, Richards, we believe. Because they have feathered feet, so they should be the Brahma. The one right in front of us right there with the black... There's uh -huh. some serious blue shade. Uh -huh. I mean, it's so cool in the sun. I think that that might be Karen and and Richards. That you can't, yeah. This one here is a is um, a, a, a gr an olive agar. Olive agar, thank you. It's Olivia's daughter for sure. Yeah, I would say that these two black ones are Karen's. Mm -hmm. Would you say Would you say both or? Um, Karen and Misty would be my two guesses. Mm, okay. Because Misty has had some very dark black and then the brown starts to come out later. Does Misty have black legs? She does not. Yeah, because both of them have black legs. Which is very unique. I don't think any of our birds have black legs, not even Karen. Yeah. 
All right, where's, I'm scaring them. So let's. Yeah. Leave. <laughs> They're like, hang on. All right, and then the ones with the most interesting color are, are right. in this. And these these ones, um, we're going to sell the two roosters. And this was our experiment with only hatching out round eggs. You know, the old wives' yeah. tale that I knew was an old wives' tale. But I still thought it'd be kind of fun to make a video on. We just never made a video on it. Um, but they were all um, round and we got three girls and two boys out of that batch. And those, the girls will go in with our, our free range girls and our egg layers for us. And then the boys will probably um, gift or sell. All right, so these guys are really skittish. <laughs> but this one, look at how beautiful. So that was our surprise one. This one that has all the colors. Oh, oh my goodness. He's a jerk. Yeah, he really is. Really is. So and I also need... like the one that's about to jump down. Oh yeah, he's the salmon faverel. Okay. So the one that just jumped down with the brown back and the really poofy, he's gonna have really fluffy legs. And the females that we'll breed him with will literally look very similar to our meat birds. Um, the coloring. Uh, but they will um, have the feathery legs like he does. And then the silver and black ones, you can see the one that has less black on the neck, there's three of them. Uh -huh. So the first two are males and the one without the black collar is the female. Oh, okay. And then the two black ones are the um, black ostrilopes. Oh, okay. They're both the same breed. And then the one outside is our um, leg bar. Leg bar. And the Americana is the one that looks kind of similar to him, but with a floofier face inside. inside right here. Yeah. Yep. So the Americana gets picked on a lot. Um, your Faverol. Yep. You That's the Faverol. Yeah. You can see the tail feathers are just not there. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's it's getting, getting it's getting picked on. Quite okay, a bit. so we need to separate. Yep, and they're obviously. Yeah, they're freaked out. So freaked let's out get out of here. But they're so pretty. <laughs> I just now that they're like maturing, it's so co cool to see the what they're gonna look like. What they're gonna look like, yeah. Yeah, it was hard. So if anyone knows what our surprise rooster was, it's the one right here that's walking towards Nate or towards the camera, kind of. Um, we're not sure exactly what he is. Um, but he's got very interesting the flapping the wings. Yeah, colors and markings. Yeah, it's almost like the, the salmon faverol. Like the body looks very similar mm -hmm. with the brown. But he doesn't have the feathery legs. Right. Which I did order two of them. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. I don't, they, they have really, like they have, like the Cochins, they should have the whole legs feathery, the whole butt, everything all the way down. <laughs> Chickens. So I don't think it's him. I don't think they're the same, even though they look very similar. Reminds me of like a 80s punk rocker with a, <laughs> with a um, bleached yeah. hair, the striped <laughs> bleached hair, you know, the, what are they, the feather bleach or whatever you yeah. call it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's cool. Yeah. Oh. So, oh, you know what? When we passed, you forgot to talk about what I you did, did today. I forgot to talk about the. We were so excited landscape. about chickens. Yeah, I know. We really were. <laughs> um, so we'll we'll end this really kind of. It won't be a very long one today, but I did spend uh, the majority of the day working on the landscaping. Had to redo a couple places again. Uh, along the foundation of the house just to get it nice and tucked up there. I had it too tight, so it was just weird. So I had to loosen it and then retuck it. Um, and then I got, I figured out the way that I'm gonna do the trim over by the RV. I got it in the position that I, that I like and didn't consult with Katie, so I really hope that she likes it. I'm good. She's good, perfect. I support your decisions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're just saying that because we're on camera. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> I'm a very supportive wife. You are. Look at how cute those boys are. Oh, they're so cute. They're ready for their dindins. They're like, it's hot. Actually, today was gorgeous. Yeah, today was turned out really, really nice. It didn't rain like we thought it was gonna rain. Just for about at 45 minutes. Yeah, early in the morning and then 
<laughs> oh, you're just the cutest boy. You really are. You're just the cutest boy. <laughs> and that tooth that just hangs out. <laughs> that tooth is. So he has a vet appointment tomorrow to draw blood to get the titer done. And then a week from today, we'll go, go and get results. And, and that's talk. just a reminder on the flea issue, or the tick issue, the tick bite. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, the titer for the for the <laughs> E uh, canis. I don't know how to say it, so we're calling it E canis. Yeah. Um, tick disease that he got. Yep. So, yeah, so that's it. I think we're gonna do some planting tonight. Yes. Before the sun goes down. I might break out the chainsaw and clear up some areas let's too. Let's just plant. We got lots let's of plants. Let's just plant? Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's stick to one thing. Oh, but we're, gonna... we're not good at that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to practice. We're going to practice. Yeah. So, <laughs> so with that, we're going to plant and we're going to say goodbye. Bye. We'll see you on Wednesday. I might see you on Wednesday. We'll see how it goes before. I think we'll have time. That's right, because we're driving you to the... Okay. Yep, driving we'll see you to soon. the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. You ready for some din-dins, buddy? Are you Hans? Hello. You just come to say hello. You did. He just came to say. Kinsley, are you ready for some dinner? She's... Oh, yes. Oh, she, she is. Yes, she is. Yes, oh, she is. She knows what that means. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are like, meh. She's like, uh-huh, we're going. Oh, here it is. Look, 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 look. Here's my line. Here's my line. So, starting from here, can you see it? Just whoop. And the reason we have this little bump right here, we gotta, it kind of comes, comes in and then it goes back out is because that's the driveway, but people usually back in, back out right here to go out to the street. So this little bump is to allow them to bring their car back and go out. <laughs>